Mm, yay. I'm going to take it off screen share for a moment so that we can see all of each other in a beautiful way. I just want to welcome you all um, to this moment, uh, this initiation moment for me. Uh, I've been working on this project for many years, many, many years, and I gratefully and thankfully and blessedly have come to this moment where it is published. Um, I think people are going to continue to pop in with us as we go along, so forgive me if I kind of looking all over, keeping track of my screen. Um, I'm just looking at each of you and seeing you. I see Veronica and Lee and Sherry and Kitty and Anne. I see Martha and George and Piliaka, yay, all the way from Switzerland. And Cassandra and Ryan and Paula and Pamela. Patricia and Deanna and Anne and Carol and another who's calling in. I just see all of you and am so honored to be here with all of you. Some of you I know well and have traveled through Egypt with. Some of you I've been in classes with, either learning or in my teaching both. I'm always learning when I'm teaching, which is a deep truth. We are teachers are learners and learners are teachers. You teach me so much. I would love if you put in the chat where you're calling in from, just so we can see where in the world we are. It would be wonderful. And I'm recording this um, so that those who've also registered, I think there was like 50 people who registered and many of them wanted to get the recording of it afterwards. So that way I can send it out to everybody. Um, so yay, 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 yes. It's funny, I, I do a lot of online classes and for some reason I'm, I'm more nervous today <laughs> than I ever am in classes. So I'm like, oh, um, but I just need to think of this as a class and then I won't be nervous, but it's not a class, it's a sharing, so. Um, welcome to all of you and gratitude. And I especially want to give gratitude to this beautiful woman, Veronica, who's sitting here with us because it is through her beautiful inspiration and creativity that she took my vision and manifested it into the art that is on the cover of the book and the back of the book, both of those images. And uh, I was, um, I've known her for some time and she had posted some images of something she was painting. And the moment I saw those images, I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's who's, that, that's, that's what needs to be on the cover. And so I reached out to her and she was willing, willing to come and show up with me and go through the class and receive whatever she received from it and, and then bring forward the vision that's on the cover. So Veronica, I see you. I thank you so much. I also want to give gratitude to Normandy Ellis, my dear teacher and colleague and friend and sister in the in the cosmos that we share together. And uh, she was willing amidst her very busy life and full schedule to take some time to read the book and offer the foreword that she has now in the book. So I want to just deeply appreciate her. I have so much love for her. I want to um, give gratitude to there's a number of people who were willing to give endorsements to the book, so I want to give honor to them. Uh, Linda Starwolf was one of them and um, Sandra Ingerman and Elida Birch and uh, Robin Soul Ingerman. No, sorry, Lieberman, Robin Soul Lieberman, sorry, Robin and Elaine. Um, Thank you. And thank you to all my students who have gone through the Gifts of Mott classes as I was writing this book and I put it out to the universe to come and 
have class with me to see if the alchemy that I've offered here works. And many of you who are here showed up for me in those classes. And also some of you have read it in the process to help me see if I was on track and if what I was doing in the class met with what I was doing in the book. So I want to just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I also want to honor my family because, you know, their patience was immense, <laughs> allowing me to take the time to go to Egypt, allowing me to take the time to be on the computer and endless hours as I worked on this process. So thank you to them. And also, finally, there's, you know, so many people and I've, I've given much of this gratitude in the book, but I just wanted to verbalize it as well. Um, I'm going to give gratitude to Nikki, Nikki Scully, for um, all that she's been in my life, my friend, my teacher, my colleague, my inspiration. And um, I'm just deeply gratitude, grateful for her. And I'm grateful to the Egypt and to the Nedaru and especially to Ma'at because she stepped into my life and she helped me arrive, arrive deeply into myself, arrive deeply into the truths of Ma'at, into the truths of what I'm going to share today and what I've shared in the book. And I hope that um, those of you who have the book or are receiving it, or if you decide to get it, that the truth shared there sparks something in you for your own life for your own becoming, because that's really what she's about, is helping us gain a compass to align ourselves to that which is important to us. So gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Um, just a quick overview of what I hope to do in our hour together. Um, I want to read the honoring, which comes from the book, and the prayer for truth. And then I'm going to guide us through the heart synchronization meditation. And then I have a couple of uh, small, some of the small chapters I'll read out of the book and then do a really broad, quick overview of Ma'at um, to get to know her and welcome her. Um, and then if you haven't already, I'll, I'll show you where to buy the book and then a little snippet about the next Gifts of Ma'at class. And then if there's any questions at the end, um, I would be honored to answer those questions. So, um, hold on a second, my screen always changes when I put it back on screen share, so there we go. So honoring, I wrote this for this book, and since it was written, I've had many classes, um, and it's become my foundation of entering into every class that I do. And um, so I'm going to begin with it. And you're welcome. I, I'll bring it up on the screen. You're welcome to read it along with me. You're welcome to speak it out loud. Don't unmute yourself, please, just because it will make kind of funny sound. But um, reading it has power, speaking it, hearing it, receiving it. So this is the honoring. Hmm. In gratitude of the directions, east, south, west, north, above, below, center, I am honored to have this space to co-create in this place. In gratitude of the elements, air, fire, water, earth, akasha, I am honored to have the building blocks that provide foundation. In gratitude of time, past, present, future, I am honored by what was, what is, and what will be. In gratitude of the makers, mother, father, divinity by all your names, I am honored by this opportunity to experience the gift of life. In gratitude of the guides, ancestors, nature, teachers, family, friends, I am honored by your wisdom, understanding, and patience. In gratitude of myself and all of yourselves, <laughs> heart, mind, body, soul, I am honored to have this chance to serve the highest good of all. 
prayer for truth. Calling on the Netaru of the ancient Egyptian pantheon who have witnessed the permutations of human endeavors for eons. May they encircle us with their protection in these times of deep change, and may they help sweep from the foundation of Ma'at anything that does not serve our highest truth. Calling on the 42 assessors, sacred witnesses who hear our 42 positive dedications, may they receive our declarations of truth. Calling on the Akar, sacred lions who guard the gates of yesterday and tomorrow, may they help us arrive in this present moment and choose truth. Calling on Bastet, feline deity of care and consideration. May she remind us to curl up in the sunshine and care for ourselves so that we may also care for truth. Calling on Jehute, creator deity of wisdom. May he help us remember our innate wisdom as he records what was, what is, and what will be into the cosmic records of truth. Calling on Hetur, gentle cow deity of joy, may she help us remember to awaken to the beauty of this biosphere to celebrate truth. Calling on Sekhmet, lioness deity of fierce compassion, healing, and strength, may she help us walk with courage to honor and protect truth. Calling on Aset, Great Mother, may she show us how to weave a better tomorrow with today's threads of truth. Calling on De Nebet Het, High Priestess, may she uncover that which was hidden to help us understand truth. Calling on Anpu, Jackal Deity of the Heart Way. May he guide us forward to help us make the choices that arise from truth. Calling on Ray, Sun Deity of Light. May he illuminate the hearts of all humans to help us remember truth. Calling on Asir, Deity of Regeneration. May he help us know the gift of life and nurture truth. Calling on Amit, ferocious and hungry goddess, consumer of souls. May she accept the offering she is given so that our heart may be filled with truth. Calling on Ma'at, deity of truth justice, harmony, natural law, balance, and reciprocity. She who is the foundation upon which we walk, may she help our hearts be as light as a feather so that we may know truth. And so it is. So I'm gonna go right into the meditation and I would like to invite you to just sit back and close your eyes if you feel like having your eyes closed um, and just receive. I've also recorded this and you can find it on um, the Gifts of Ma'at website if you ever just want to sink in and go on a little heart synchronization journey. In this meditation, we will meet Geb, who is the earth. In ancient Egypt, earth was masculine, and his name was Geb. And we will meet Nuit, who is the sky, and she is feminine. She's the great sky mother. We will meet Jehute as the, as the moon. He is a moon god. Um, there are other Egyptian moon gods, but in this meditation, it's Jehute who we meet as moon and we will meet Ma'at and Ray, our son.
So take a moment and just bring honor to your body, the sacred vessel that has carried you through your life from the moment you were born until this moment now. Just notice what is true for you. Bring attention to how you feel, good, bad, indifferent, no judgment, just simple awareness of your body. Bring your attention to intention. What intention do you have for this day, for your life? Bring your awareness to your breath. This breath is a gift. Your awareness is a gift. From the moment of birth until death ends your life, you breathe in and out. Take this moment to feel your breath. Inhale and pause for a moment. Exhale and pause for a moment. As you inhale deeply, your shoulders gently rise, your belly extends, and your back expands. Allow the air to completely enter your body, to connect you to transcendent, universal love. Exhale fully and completely, offering your gratitude for this gift of breath. As you focus on this exchange of air, allow your thoughts to flow past without hooking onto any particular thought. Just notice and release. Notice and release. Inhale naturally. Exhale easily. Notice your breath. Is it fast, slow, shallow, deep? No judgment, just notice as ease and relaxation spread throughout your body. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. As you breathe in deeply, allow your mind to calm. Breathe out any tension or anxiety. As you breathe in deeply, allow your body to relax. Breathe out any tension or pain. As you breathe in deeply, allow your inner knowing to open for this experience to unfold. And breathe out any uncertainties. As you continue to breathe deeply, bring your attention to your heart center, the holy of holies within the temple that is your sacred body. Within your heart center, your heart flame resides. How do you sense this flame? Do you feel its heat or warmth? Do you see a flickering candle or a blazing sun? Do you know it to be by the beat of your heart? Do you smell the essence of a bonfire? Do you hear the sound of a crackling hearth? In whatever way you sense it is right for you, trust this. Breathe with your heart flame and notice how it grows, perhaps in intensity, brightness, or heat. Just notice. As you breathe with your heart flame, begin to feel the transcendent love that is within you, that is you. And feed your heart flame with this love. With each breath, love travels through your body, 
infusing all your cells and all your molecules with love. Spreading to every cell and molecule in your body. Fill up with love. Love is the truth of who you are. Inhale love. Exhale love. Now bring your awareness to Geb, the earth, who is under you, holding you. Feel his solidity. And as you sink down, become aware of his soil, his rocks. Just under the surface, perhaps you notice burrowing life or the roots of the plants. Allow your awareness to sink deeper. Notice the solid, dense bedrock. Deeper still, the mantle begins to heat the bedrock to become molten magma that swirls and flows. Inhale an awareness of the layers of Geb. Exhale an awareness of the layers of Geb. Deeper still, your attention and awareness sink down into the very heart of Geb. In this place, experience Geb's vitality. Notice that from this center point, you can sense a slow and deeply powerful heartbeat. Perhaps you can feel it. Perhaps you can hear it. Allow your heartbeat to synchronize with the heartbeat of Geb. Inhale vitality. Exhale vitality. As your heart and Geb's heart align, you can begin to sense the heartbeat of the myriad life forms who grace the surface, the walking ones, the feathered ones, the slithering ones, the swimming ones, all synchronized with Geb's heartbeat. Feel this connection. Inhale your connection to the web of life. Exhale your connection to the web of life. From this place in the heart of Geb, feel the pulse of the rooted ones, all the plant life with whom you share reciprocity of breath. Feel their life force. Feel their connection to Geb. Inhale the life force of the rooted ones. Exhale the life force of the rooted ones. From this place in the heart of Geb, feel the connection to the ancestors, your relatives who breathed this breath once before. Feel connected to the relatives of all living beings who helped shape the truth of what is now. Inhale your connection to the ancestors. Exhale your connection to the ancestors. With this profound connection to the life that is and the life that was, Sense the threads of becoming that connect you to the life that will be. Those descendants who will breathe this shared breath in your future. Inhale your connection to the descendants. Exhale your connection to the descendants. Begin to now breathe the vitality of Geb and the totality of your connection to life up through the layers of the earth 
and through the soles of your feet. Allow this vitality to move up into your heart center as it fills, infuses, mixes, and merges with the love that fuels your heart flame. Breathe this expanded breath of vitality and love to every cell and molecule in your body. Inhale vitality and love. Exhale vitality and love. Still rooted to and breathing from the heart of Geb, you now begin to notice the space above your head, acknowledging whatever's there, perhaps the ceiling, branches, the sky. As your awareness expands further out, you look down upon the face of Geb and notice the brilliance of this living, breathing earth being. Inhale presence. Exhale expansion. Turn your attention to the moon, Jehute, encircling Geb in an ever cycling relationship. Notice as he pulls and pushes the waters of Geb. See Jehute's changing face from the unseen to full and bright. Bring your attention to the heart of Jehute. Synchronize your heart with the heart of the moon. Experience his wisdom. Breathe this wisdom down through the top of your head and into your heart center, where it mixes and mingles with your love and the vitality of Geb to infuse every cell and molecule in your body. Inhale wisdom, vitality, and love. Exhale wisdom, vitality, and love. From Geb to Juhute, now notice the intensely illuminated ray, this star to whom we are deeply dependent on, as he holds the dance of the solar system in motion. Feel his luminosity, his ever steady light that casts the darkness back. Feel the life he gives as he shines his light upon the world, helping the earth to grow the required nutrients for life to subsist and thrive. Allow your awareness to enter the heart of Ray. Synchronize your heart with the heart of the sun. Feel his light. Know this light. Be the light. Breathe this light down through your head and into your heart center where it mixes and mingles with your love, the vitality of Geb, and the wisdom of Jehute to permeate every cell and molecule in your body. Inhale light, wisdom, vitality, and love. Exhale light, wisdom, vitality, and love. Now bring your attention to the heart of Nuit, the sky. Synchronize your heart with the heart of the sky. Notice all the stars that adorn her body with their light and the countless planets that inform her with creativity gathered from moving through countless ages. Experience this creativity. Breathe this creativity down through all the layers of time and space, through your head and into your heart center, where it mixes and mingles with your love, the vitality of Geb, the wisdom of Jehute, and the light of Ray, to saturate every cell and molecule in your body. 
Inhale creativity, light, wisdom, vitality, and love. Exhale creativity, light, wisdom, vitality, and love. From within the starry body of Nuit, you are drawn to the heart center of Ma'at. Synchronize your heart with the heart of truth. Feel her natural order, her harmony, her balance. Feel her vast and ancient truth. Breathe this truth down through all the layers of existence through your head and into your heart center, where it mixes and mingles with your love, the vitality of Geb, the wisdom of Jehute, the light of Ray, and the creativity of Nuit to activate every cell and molecule in your body. Inhale truth, creativity, light, wisdom, vitality, and love. Exhale, truth, creativity, light, wisdom, vitality, and love. Feel as together this love, vitality, wisdom, light, creativity, and truth transform every atom in your body. It shifts the vibration and allows you to fully receive your gifts, to fully receive your connection to the divine and to fully be your purpose for being on this planet at this time. Inhale, purpose. Exhale, purpose. Notice that your breath is now deep and smooth. Your heart center glows brightly with your inner flame burning strong. Your love flows freely through your being and is internally connected to Ma'at, Nuit, Ray, Jehute, and Geb as you are deeply in sync with the continued unfolding of existence. Inhaling, fusing, merging, and mixing the gifts of this breath with your heart flame. Exhaling, trusting, allowing, arriving, receiving and becoming. As you breathe fully in sync with your heart and the hearts of Geb, Jehute, Re, Nuit, and Ma'at, allow the exponential vitality, love, wisdom, light, creativity, and truth now contained in your breath to extend out, extend out to your family, Extend out to your community. Extend out to your culture. Extend out to all humanity. Extend out to the web of life. Extend out to any person, situation, or place in need of an infusion of love. Breathe deeply with the heart of it all. Right here, right now. You are fully connected, aware, and ready as you perpetually arrive into the gift of this present moment again and again. Take a moment to wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers. And when you're ready, open your eyes.
I want to share two short readings from the book. I know that was a reading, but it was also meditation. <laughs> um, I want to share with you Why This Now, which is chapter two um, in the section two, My Truth, and Envisioning Ma'at, which is in section four, A Truth. Why this now? I am a seeker of truth. I seek an understanding of the synthesis of my purpose and place in this lifetime, woven from the threads of what was and what is. In this, my life has taken a circuitous route as I follow my heart's direction. My heart now calls for me to share the who and what of Ma'at, the ancient Egyptian archetype and deity of truth, justice, harmony, balance, reciprocity, natural law, and cosmic order, and to deepen the understanding of her spiritual ethics. I know that everything in my life has led me to this moment. I've been called to Ma'at in a deeply profound way. Although I have long known of this deity distantly and abstractly, it was not until my first visit to Egypt in 2012 with Nikki Scully that I began to contemplate Ma'at's identity and significance on a much deeper level. A decade and more than 17 trips to Egypt later, I have learned, served, sought, led, shared and stood in awe time and time again as witness to the mysteries that Egypt has revealed. I carry much gratitude for the guidance Ma'at has shown me in this time. My personal mythos has continued to unfold within the fabric of this ancient civilization and within the truth of Ma'at. At times, I feel as if the very land of Egypt has urged me forward. The experiences that led me to Ma'at have come from walking through the temples and holy places, both as a seeker and a leader. During my time there, I have created, managed, facilitated special journeys for those participants who were called to join my pilgrimages. Together, we entered and received from the mysteries of Egypt. I have met Ma'at as I offered my services by donating crochet hooks and weaving looms, and by teaching handcrafts to youth and women, when sometimes the only shared language was that of our hands. Egypt opened me to a deeper witnessing of what it is to have a heart as light as Ma'at's feather and what it means to live my life with Ma'at as my compass. The Gifts of Ma'at offers a life-affirming perspective on the Egyptian afterlife ritual of the weighing of the heart as a modern path of inspired personal morality. Through the process articulated in this book, you are invited to create your own personal code of ethics and to record your own book of becoming light. Your book is meant not only to serve merely as a record of what was, it is a guide to help you truly incarnate into your truth and life's purpose. There are many different codes of ethics and ideas of morality. All hold some threads of truth. I invite you to find those threads that inspire you to be the best you can be. As these threads are woven into a collective and comprehensive tapestry, perhaps humanity itself can be rewoven into one people whose future embodies more compassion, peace, acceptance, understanding, prosperity, and love for all. It is my hope that this work guides each of you who engages with it towards a more effective stewardship of this fractured epoch. If we can truly unite in compassion and love, then perhaps we can truly become caretakers that our collective planetary body, Earth, is calling us to be. 
I believe we live in a time when healthy, whole, and collaborative leaders are being called forth to help us remember who we are and why we are here. These emergent leaders follow a deep call to truth and understand that their power and service come through empowering others to achieve health and wholeness. I believe each of us has the capacity to become such a leader and that each of our individual choices co-create our collective future. Each choice ripples onward in unseen and unknown ways. What are you choosing? Chapter seven, envisioning Ma'at. Ma'at is cosmic order. Envision the birth of the universe as matter coalesces into planetary spheres, spheres which are pulled into perfect orbit around newly shining suns. And as solar systems are pulled into a spiraling dance with others of their kind, becoming great galactic systems. Ma'at is balance. Envision an elementally charged planet bursting with volcanic activity and volatile weather patterns as the elementals of earth, water, fire, and air settle into equilibrium within the newly formed planetary sphere. Ma'at is natural law. Envision how the perfect combination of heat and cold, pressure and gravity, and elemental configurations fuse with a divine spark. As life emerges on the world stage, seeking to reproduce itself in a myriad of combinations and shapes, using time and space as its canvas. Ma'at is reciprocity. Envision all of nature in a fluid and dynamic exchange of giving and receiving. Ma'at is justice. Envision the totality of human interactions, how we organize ourselves, how we relate to one another, how we hold ourselves accountable. Ma'at is harmony. Envision the possibility of humanity coming into a balanced and reciprocal relationship with the web of life. Ma'at is truth. Envision all that was, is, and will be in the continual unfolding of deep time. Envision the art. A little bit about Ma'at. Why Ma'at? in the weighing of the heart and the 42 negative confessions. So I have a few images of her here from different places in Egypt. I love this first one. This is in the Nubian Museum in Aswan and she's pouring the water. And the next one in the top center is Ma'at at the front of the sun barge. And this is the sun, the morning sun. And you know it's the morning sun because it has Kephra, the scarab in it. And Kephri Ray is the morning sun. And then over here, this is her with her measuring stick. And this is on the walls um, of the workers' village. Uh, I can't remember what it's called right now in this moment. It's called the workers' village. It's on the West Bank in Luxor. Um, Medina El Dair, maybe that's it, Medina El Dair. Um, this one in the middle is uh, the Pharaoh Seti 
holding Ma'at because it was believed in the ancient day that the people served Ma'at. That was their purpose for being in the world. And the Pharaoh's purpose was to receive Ma'at, to care for Ma'at, and to return Ma'at unharmed at the end of his reign. And this image is showing him returning Ma'at unharmed. This is one of my favorite images of Ma'at. This is on the front of a sarcophagus that was in the old Egyptian museum. I don't know where they've moved it because all the artifacts have been moved around with the opening of the Grand Egyptian Museum, which is scheduled to open and maybe in November. Um, but I love it because she's kneeling, her wings are out, she's holding her feathers, and she has the sun disk above her head. And then this bottom one is a, such a simple, just line drawing of on papyrus of Ma'at at the head again of the sun barge. And this time it's Ray with the full sun, like the, the direct noon sun. Um, and it was believed that she was at the front of the barge because she helped to, she was there to help the barge move through the chaos, to keep the chaos back so that order would stay, so that the sun didn't go, you know, spinning off into space and unraveling all of our, our um, cosmic order. So her symbol, as you can see, replicated in all of these images is the ostrich feather. I have a lot of them back here blowing in my breeze. And the ostrich feather is quite interesting because it's balanced, right? The, the featherlets that are on this side are equal on this side all the way up. They're balanced. And the other thing I think is so fascinating about the feather, there's a lot of breeze moving. I have a fan in here. But even in the stillest of rooms where you can't detect a breeze, the featherlets will detect current, right? And so I always think of it as, you know, detecting the currents of truth. The feather has that high level of sensitivity to detect truth. She has some other symbols. I don't have pictures of those here, but you'll see those in the book. Um, the plinth, it's like a rectangle with a little ramp on one side. Um, that is her symbol, and it represents the foundation because she is the foundation. And you will see in various images all over Egypt, different gods and goddesses standing upon that symbol, or, or their throne is sitting upon that symbol because even the gods and goddesses have to abide by truth. So she is their foundation, just as she is ours. Um, she's also, I'm going to move to the next picture because there's one here. Though she is not the scales, at the same time she is the scales. And this particular papyrus shows her up here at the top as the scale itself. And so she's, she's because she's balance, right? She's balance. Um, what these two papyruses are, the first one is the papyrus of um, Hennefer, which is in the, Egypt, or the Lund British Museum in London. And the one below, I don't know who it belongs to because it didn't have a name, but this papyrus was on in a traveling show that came to Portland, Oregon, not very long ago. And, and so I snapped a picture of it because I'm like, there's the wing of the heart, oh my gosh. Um, and so let me tell you just a little bit about what these represent. Some of you know this. I know you know this, but um, I want to share. So what happened in the ancient Egyptians' belief is that they would pass through the veils from this life, and they would be, their goal was to get to the um, field of reeds, is what it was called, which another word for that could be heaven or paradise. But before they could get there, they would have to go through a number of trials and tests, the first of which was to declare 42 negative confessions to the 42 assessors. Now, up here at the top of both of these papyruses, you see some of the assessors. And maybe there's 42 down here. I think there actually is 42 because there's some more down here. And these 42 were um, the kind of local gods or goddesses of various regions or gnomes or counties within ancient Egypt. And so the 
the individual would go and say, I did not do this thing, and then go to the next one. I did not steal. I did not lie. I did not sleep with my neighbor's spouse. I did not. I did not. I did not. 42 times, basically declaring that they are a good person, that I have a, a good heart. And then once that process was complete, Anubis would take them to the scales where their heart the spiritual heart, he wouldn't actually take the beating muscle organ, but the spiritual heart, which is similar to this vessel I have back here in terms of shape, it was called an ob. And he would take the ob and place it on the scale with a feather. And if the ob was lighter than the feather, he would pass. And onward he'd go, he would meet Osiris, and then be welcomed into the field of reeds. If his heart was heavier, then this beastie right here, which is a combination of a crocodile, a lion, and a hippo, the three fiercest creatures of ancient Egypt, would gobble up the soul. And at that point, game over. <laughs> Sorry, no going on to the field of reeds. So it behooved them to have a light heart. So when I was studying this process, I'm like, well, I, I think that's cool to have 42 negative confessions that all these things you didn't do, but I wanna have 42 positive declarations of things that I know are in alignment with who I believe it is to be a good person and to be able to, to write those out for myself and to declare those, to vow that this is my life. I wrote them in pencil because or on a computer because you know sometimes life changes and you learn new things and and you need to be able to adjust and grow as you evolve and grow um, but that process of writing the 42 positive declarations was the impetus for this book because like what if we all had an opportunity to write our own 42 positive declarations. These are the 42 things that are really important to me to be a good person. And then to go through a guided journey, a guided meditation where that was declared and that you move through a process of assessing what was, assessing where you're at, who you are, your place in the cosmos, and then ultimately coming and having your heart weighed against the feather of Ma'at. Felt like that's what Ma'at was calling me to do. And so I did it. <laughs> I did it. I finally did it. Uh, after these many, many years, I, I've now completed this process that you have access to and um, that I welcome you to read. I welcome you to read it, to go through the journey, to um, write your 42 positive dedications, to assess your heart. Is it heavy? Right. And to look into your heart, that ob, that vessel. And if it's heavy, you know, let's not get to the point where Ahmet, this fierce goddess, gobbles us up. Let's actually assess what's in there and pour it out and feed it to her. Right. Rather than her gobbling it up, let's let's offer her the heaviness, the stuff that's weighing us down, the stuff that makes us not be the fullest of who we can be. I'm like looking at my ob, I'm like, hmm, I have some things in there. <laughs> I need to give her an offering today. Um, so that we can really live the life that we're here to live. That's, that's the goal of this work. And that's the reason why I did this was for myself and for all of you um, to, to learn how to have a heart as light as a feather. So I'm realizing I'm pushing my time a little bit. Um, I, I think I will probably go over just a little. Um, please feel free to, to take care of you and leave if you have to right at the hour or stick around and um, be with me a little longer. Um, I will send out the recording for this to everybody if you want to go back and listen to it. And uh, so if you haven't gotten it and you want to get the book, you can get it at this link. Um, I chose to go with Amazon as a self publisher because they are really great for self publishing. I'm, you know, Amazon is what Amazon is, is a giant, huge, enormous conglomerate all over the world. But at the same time, they're really great for self publishers 
to be able to get their work out without having to go through the song and dance of what all the big publishing companies make authors go through. So um, you can get your copy there. And if you have any questions about it, please let me know. If you find any typos, dare I ask, uh, let me know because it's been read and vetted and edited and, and combed through endlessly by multiple eyes. Um, but still, you know, you never know what you might find as you go through it. And you're like, uh, excuse me, is our indigo page, whatever. Anyway, um, I also created using Veronica's amazing art uh, workbook that has all the questions that are prompts in the in the book for um, writing your book of becoming light. And there's also a blank journal that doesn't have the questions. It just has blank pages and little feathers at the top um, if you don't want to use the prompts. So if that calls to you, these are available. Any blank journal works for writing your book of becoming light or even a computer file, right? Make a file and call it my book of becoming light and then record your experience in that. Um, I also, as I shared earlier, I do a class and I, I started with the book and then I moved into class and I did four rounds of the class. Um, I'm looking at you, Lee, you've been at every single one of those classes. <laughs> Bless your heart. Your heart must be so light now. I, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. And I'm bringing it back around again in October. And what is true is you can read the book and get everything that the class, well, not everything, but a lot of what the class offers, you can get simply by reading the book and going through the guided journey in the book. And I know it to be true that receiving the journeys, being able to just sit back and receive them, there's something very potent about that. There is also something very beautiful and potent about the community that comes together and supports one another as we move through these eight classes together. Um, it's really precious. It's really precious to just hold space for each other as we experience this journey. So if you feel called, I would love to have you and all of you who are here now and all of you who are um, watching this um, because you registered, those of you who've asked for the recording, um, I'm happy to give you a discount if you want to come and join me. And, you know, Lee never has to pay ever again to show up at class because I decided that um, really there's levels, right? You show up once. Thank you. You show up a second time. I'm not going to charge you as much. You've already been here with me. Show up a third time. I'm not going to, I'm going to charge you even less. But after you've been with me three times in this class, I figure you are the foundation of Ma'at and you are forevermore welcome to come join me. And so that's true for any of you. If you've been to the class once or twice or three times or four times, all of the information of that and the costs and all of that are at the link there, Sacred Witness. Um, slash gifts of Ma'at class. And I'm going to just copy it and pop it into the chat so you can check it out if you are so called. And if you're not so called, uh, that's wonderful too. There it is. So, and I'll just put this in there also. So that is, I did it mostly two minutes after the hour, um, everything that I wanted to bring forward to you today to guide you through that meditation, to help you synchronize your heart to all those levels of being. And I just am wondering if anybody has any questions um, about Ma'at, about the book, about me, about the class, um, about any of it. About life. I don't know if I can answer those questions, but I'm going to go ahead and stop my share. And um, I'm just peeking. I haven't looked at the chat. I'm just looking where you're all from. Yay. Aw, Ryan. I love that. Ryan wrote, I opened all my graduate classes with the honoring this week. Can you share, Ryan, what that was like? Because, I mean, it's kind of a mainstream kind of class, I'm assuming. How did they receive this honoring? Um, 
Yeah, well, I work at uh, a humanistic existential grad school, so things are a little different. Um, and uh, in, in each class, it was a little bit different, but it really centered people into, especially like the last line, the highest good of all. Like that's the thing that we really try to train people to do. And it just like the whole class felt like we came together and like, this is what they signed up for, you know? Um, so yeah, I thought that, I mean, they just, they thought it was beautiful and I'll use it a week from Monday when I have this other group of small students. Thank you. I love that. I love that. Wow. So are there any questions? Or any thoughts, anything that you'd like to add in? Well, I want to say congratulations. You and I traveled together a bit to, to Egypt and then those wonderful workshops at Nikki's and I've seen this start to develop. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still remembering those camel rides to, uh, to <laughs> Abu Ghraib. <laughs> Oh, yay. I'm sure Normandy is too. Yeah, her bum is probably still a little sore from that one. <laughs> you know, and along those lines, um, I am I have two spots left on my Egypt trip in February, if anybody is feeling called. I know some of you here are going. Uh, Ryan's going, Pamela's going, Casey's going. Um, who else? Sherry's going. George and Martha are going, um, Ryan's going. So a bunch of you here are going to be with me there, which is super exciting. And some of you, um, all of you will be there with me in my heart. Um, but no, there's a couple spots left. And, you know, I haven't yet cast further out. Um, I mean, conceptually I have, but I haven't landed dates or anything for future Egypt travels. And, you know, Normandy still goes to Egypt as well, and she has some trips. So I just want to honor that as well, that if you feel called to join Normandy and travel with her, that she, she does that as well. So thank you, everybody. Ryan? I have a question, but I want to plug this uh, tour to Egypt. Uh, the itinerary... Is, there's nothing parallel to it. So if you don't go with this, write it down because that's this is the stuff you want to do and you want to see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, the, my question is uh, about the journey, like your process of how you come to write a journey. Is it something you you go through an experience first and then bring back to us, or is there is there some intention and purpose in, in that you set first? I'm just super curious about that. That's a good question. Um, so it varies, right? For this particular book, I started having experiences before I started writing the book, right? And I'd write a little experience down here and I'd write an experience down there. Um, and then when I started writing the book, I'm like, oh, that was for here and that was for there, right? So then I started weaving all these pieces of my life starting that started in, let's say, 2007. I don't know if that's the right date, but that's the number that's popping into my brain. So around 2007, things started coming in, not knowing what they are for. They are just these experiences. And... Um, and so that's how this came, you know, in some of my classes, as some of you know, um, I have an intention of what the journey is, but it's not until we arrive in class and I enter into the mystery with all of us in that day at that time that the journey comes in. And I may have a framework like, okay, I know that this deity is going to come. I know we're going to work with this aspect or this archetype is needed for us in the work right now. And try as I might, even up till the night before, the journey's not there until I enter into the class that day. Um, when I'm in Egypt, I have a framework, right? It's like the scaffolding, the itinerary is part of that framework. The intention of the journey uh, of the pilgrimage is part of that framework. Like in, in February, it's called the keys of the heart. And the intention is that we're looking for the keys to unlock 
whatever it is we need to unlock. And keys in a kind of double meaning. One is a key to unlock a door, and the other is, you know, on a map, there's the keys that represent different things, right? So in each place we go along the journey, we'll be looking for the key for that location on the map. And that key for that location is also the key that unlocks something for us. So I have all of the intention there. I have the the framework. But what I learned long ago, and this I learned um, both through my experience, but also from Nikki Scully is the and Norman D. Ellis, both of them. Um, if I determine what it is we're supposed to do on any given day, I'm not being open to the mysteries of Egypt, right? I'm, I have to arrive into the day and feel where the sun is moving in that day, feel the pulse of, of the land, the pulse of the country, the pulse of the Egyptian people, the pulse of the guards and the temples, the pulse of the participants on the journey that day. And all of those pieces come in to fuse with the intention and then out of that comes the alchemy out of that comes the work we're doing so i don't know if that answers your question ryan but um there's no one way i think ultimately i listen to the mystery and i open to the mystery and i trust it i trust my heart now that it guides me where i need to be right it, it guides me um into each moment right to be able to show up and pay attention and that's in there. Show up and pay attention. It's one of the chapters. Um, and when I show up and pay attention, then everything I need is right here. Even if I'm having a really crappy day and I'm really bummed and some really bad stuff is happening, if I show up and pay attention, I have all the tools I need, right? Because I'm anchored in the present tense rather than in what was or what will be. I'm, I'm anchored in now. And uh, not perfect in it, but it's really a deep practice for me to show up, pay attention, show up, pay attention, be present, be present, be present. So thank you for your question. Is there any other questions? Feeling somewhat complete, if you are feeling complete. Yay. Okay, everybody. The last thing I want to, I'm going to bring up my slideshow one more time. And... I just want to speak this with you and I encourage you to also speak this or hear it as you as the I I'll be saying I but I'm it's the the collective I okay. <sighs> Taking a deep breath connecting in with all of all of those forces of earth and sky and everything in between. In Ma'at I trust. As Ma'at, I act. With Ma'at, I live. And to Ma'at, I return. Hmm. Thank you, everybody. Let me take off my pin. So we're all just here. I look forward to seeing some of you sooner and some of you later. And if you have any questions as we move along, do feel free to reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Bye for now.